Welcome to this episode of the Limitation is MRI's podcast. On this episode, I have a super awesome, superhuman, biceptical man in Tom Morrison. Tom Morrison is a mobility coach and much more. He has been around in my life for maybe 12 years, slightly longer. We have done many fun things, uh, which we will get into later on. But from what I can see and from what I know of you, you help people reclaim their body so they can reclaim their life i think that was a nice way of putting it that my brain came up with so uh, i know i just ranted a wee bit but for the people that haven't met you who live under a stone or a rock um can you give a little introduction as to who you are and welcome to the show thank you very much thank you very much Liam. yes i can't believe yeah you're probably right it is probably like 12 mm-hmm. years that's insane yeah um but yeah in a nutshell that's um our entire motto is to give people back something that they think that they've lost and then our type of training and the experiences that we have it's through giving people better mobility and better movement because what i've just always found is if you don't move well and you don't feel well and good in your own skin you're generally not as motivated to do stuff so everything can just fall off the back of that so even diet um, training consistency everything in general so we like to try and separate out mobility as making it an essential thing that you should always do as if it was your job and then Mm -hmm. anything else can come off the back of that and we want people to try as much different things as what excites them because you yourself will know if you're excited about something you're gonna do it you're gonna be all in you're gonna really really enjoy it and you're gonna stick at it whereas if you're forcing yourself to have to do something especially if you're sore as well and your training that you're picking to do is making you more sore and you don't know how to fix any of the restrictions you have you just won't be consistent and you'll just end up in that never ending rat race. Yeah. I I love seeing that whenever you're working with people and and the clients that come through your program, you just see that they're, they're from all walks of life. So you notice in the olden days, it's not, I don't think it's as bad now, but gyms would be like, you have to do this and this is what you do. And this is what you do to get stronger. Um, one of the things I think will get out of the way straight away is it's bound to come up for you a lot. People going, ah, but it's easy for you. So you are mobile and you've always been exercising. You've always been mobile. Imagine what it's like for someone like me. Have you always been a mobile person? <laughs> <laughs> Not even a wee bit. Um, yeah. So many, many moons ago, probably there was a good 12 years ago. Um, I was the most inflexible person you would ever meet. So even now we'll get, I'll get messages from people and was saying, oh, you, you'll know your, but you know, your hurts from your elbow when you're starting to train me, I've this, that, and the other. And it's like, you have no idea where I was at at one point. So every kind of YouTube video we have of every little imbalance that's going on and restrictions you can have and things you're struggling with, I pretty much went through all of them personally as well. Yeah. Um, and then started to realize that when working with clients, it's like, oh, it's not just me. There is, these things are happening to other people as well. And the only thing, the only reason why I sort of fast track learning all this stuff is because I was so bad that I didn't get away with it at all for very long. You know, I lasted a couple of years, made tons of progress, um, lost tons of weight, learned tons of skill, skills and was like totally changing my life and loving it. But then after them first couple of years, those little aches and pains, I was always getting just started compounding and getting worse and worse. And they just started turning into actual injuries. And then, uh, you know, twice a week with the physio and I was just absolutely felt like I was falling to bits you know that you know the phrase that everyone always will probably say I need rubbed out and drawn again that was me only I felt like I'd been rubbed out and drawn again 20 times and just needed to be put in the bin and um, yeah so I, I got to a point where I was fully forgiven up everything and it was it was that time I was really just starting to coach as well at the same time because I sort of really enjoyed working with people and you know did know what I was doing but back in our day <laughs> it was like <laughs> don't make us know, old stretching wasn't cool you know you, you get strong or you, you train martial arts to you know your fists are bleeding and you just go for it you know all in and stretching yeah. wasn't you know something you spent any time on and there wasn't the kind of knowledge that you can acquire now you know that's if i could go back in time and give myself my own youtube channel and be like here do all this stuff you yeah. know it'd be absolutely amazing but uh, yeah it was very hard to come across the information that i know now and that's sort of what we want to give back to people is just make this stuff more common knowledge, you know, common sense. And, you know, there's people walking around having things wrong with them for years when they could have really sorted it in, you know, maybe a couple of weeks, a couple of months, even six months. But do you imagine you have something wrong with you for 10 years you've been struggling with and you sort it out in six months to a year? That's pretty good. You know, yeah. it's just taking the time and knowing that you're on the right path because that's, it's the big thing, I think. And um, you'll probably find as well is that people, as soon as they start running their roadblock, they think, oh, well, it's not working then. And they just stop. Whenever, you know, you got to give something at least 10 times before you would give up on it totally, you know, even more than that, 20 times, 100 times. And um, 
Yeah, so. I suppose it's about building that habit because like you said, people will go and they'll see your simplistic mobility method, trademark. They'll see it <laughs> and they'll be like, I'll give that a go. And it's a wee 20 minute workout and they do it. And the next day they go, sure, my back's still a bit niggly. What the fuck? This is shit. Like, <laughs> you, only did yep. it one, you only did it one day. It'll be like taking a person and throwing them into the swimming pool and being like, swim. Yeah. Are they drown? <laughs> oh, well, yeah. wasn't for, wasn't did for it a whole time. once. <laughs> <laughs> so what yeah that's like I, i'm just thinking back like you're saying about stretching when we started wasn't anything like when we trained again i used to drive for about an hour and a half i know in my mom's car like a wee rickety car land and go straight into it like we just start hammering each other and you're like now when you look back you think that was crazy like wh where was your warm-up or anything just straight in and all the gyms were always freezing everywhere you went. Gyms were freezing. So you're, even if you weren't war, warm in the car, you were cold before you get started. <laughs> um, so with the habit setting, is that sort of the idea behind your program that you you do it and then you just get into the habit? Like you said, like it's your job, but it's a job that you love and it's a job that actually creates balance and, and health in your life. So is the habit important of doing it? Yeah, absolutely. And the, the thing with SMM, um, so it's the simplistic mobility method. So the idea is to keep it simple. So I essentially selected the best drills that assess the joints, how they're supposed to move and how the spine is supposed to move as well, and how to keep everything strong from multi directions so that there's no area for weakness or things twisting and turning and pelvic tilts and all that kind of stuff, you know, which, you know, the muscles, you can pick up bad habits so that can change your posture over time. So it's essentially all that stuff that's, you just cannot skip. You cannot get away with, especially now with everyone um, having so much, it's very common to have a desk job, you know, you're sitting all day and you're not opening your upper back, all of that stuff. So it's all of the essential stuff that you should be doing all of the time. And we always say to aim to do it four times per week because then that's the majority of your week rather than three times. So you go for four times a week, you're doing it for over half of your week so that yeah. you're doing those things often. The habit idea as well is that you get to know the movements from the program so well that you know where you're at with them all the time. So you have your initial, whenever you test, you find out where you're, you know, if, if you're lacking stability or flexibility and everywhere. And then in time, because you know the movements so well, you know where you want to get to with them, but then you also know how to maintain them as well. And that becomes part of your habit process. It's like, if you're starting to train a new system or you're doing something that's incredibly hard and taxing on the body, when you run through SMM, you'll be like, oh, this is regressing on my wee bit. I need to spend a bit more time mm -hmm. working on these movements and getting them back to where they were again so that I don't start twisting and you know my knees don't start hurting and all of that stuff. So it's really about body awareness more than anything. And you know what I've just found over the years is so many people miss simple things that are very easy to work on. And that's why I'm always focused is what, what do you struggle with? What can you fix rather than what's wrong with you? It's mm -hmm. like, you know, because there could be so many different reasons for you to have an issue that you have. And if it's say just the knee, for example, it could be because of your ankle, it could be because of your hips. So you work on your ankle and your hips, and then the knee is probably going to feel okay. Um, and doing the things that's going to make your hips more mobile and more flexible and also give them more stability is going to be what's going to help everything around that. And that goes for the lower back as well. So everything upstream and downstream, you want to always make sure you're focusing on. So that's what SMM will essentially start to do for people and make sure that they're not missing anything out because there's so many, there's so much stuff out there, you know, especially that's the problem. It's almost like reverse now compared to what happened to us in the past. It was yeah. like, you knew the one person that was good at the thing. So you went and you learned from them. Whereas now you can, you've access to millions of people that know the best stuff. And it's like, they're all putting or out claim all, to know the yeah, best stuff. Or claim, or claim to know the best stuff. And they're all putting out, you know, fantastic info anyway. But it's like, okay, I've now three million things I need to do. Yeah. <laughs> and then it becomes overwhelming and then you're less likely to do it. So um, yeah, I just wanted a blueprint for like your factory reset for your body, almost that it should be just taught in schools. And it's just stuff you should know. And it should be like, if you can't do this movement, you need to work on this movement. Otherwise, something's going to happen off the back of it. You know, it's it's you're just you're going to be compensating somewhere. So it's better to know your body. I love the idea of that self-awareness. So it's not just a program for the sake of doing exercises. And then I do that for a couple of weeks. Now, my elbow doesn't hurt. So I can just go back to doing what I was doing that wrecked my elbow. And when it hurts again, I'll just come back. You're getting that awareness. So even when you're sitting, like I know from doing loads of stuff with you over the years, you're when you seated, you're like you've been sitting with your knee in this position for a while long maybe you should move or maybe you should at least switch like and and just having that awareness when i'm walking to, to walk taller and you might walk and then go 
like I would always say it to my Tai Chi students, just imagine if I'm hiding in a bush like a ninja, not like a <laughs> weirdo, like a ninja. And every so often that'll pop into their head and they'll straighten themselves up and just getting that awareness more and more. So it's not just about cell movements that, because there's loads of stuff that we could do in a moment that'll make you feel amazing. You're like, fuck, that's deadly. Like there's wee body tricks and stuff. And you go, God, that fixed, you fixed me. And you go, yes, I did tell your friends, move along. <laughs> Whereas you're, you're building a habit of self-awareness through um, body awareness, which I, I have seen it in my experience that people think they're not aware of their body, but they are, they're aware of the pain the whole time. So they're living mm -hmm. in that, like, is that something that you find that people are so, like you said there, it might be the knee, but we'll move the ankle and the hip. And do you find that people will be like, no, no, but it's my knee. And you're like, yes, yes, but I'm just going to test. No, no, but it's my knee that's sore. And they just keep focusing on that one problem area. So do you find that's something that people are walking around doing in general, like negatively focused on their body rather than what you're trying to create, which is positivity? Absolutely. Yeah. And that's the, if a joint's not moving properly, it, the things aren't moving around it properly, then you're probably going to get the side of pain at the joint. And that's what I was saying earlier about focusing on the things that you can fix. Um, it's just a much better place to put your time investment, really. Mm. So where did this all come from? So you were doing martial arts, you were doing some CrossFit, you were being a super tank fighter man, and then your body went, nah, <laughs> <laughs> nah, mate. <laughs> yeah that's pretty much what happened um yeah it was the knee went first and then the shoulder and then it was constantly tweaking the neck like every every other month i had a really bad neck tweak and was like turning like this for weeks at a time and um, and it was just horrible and my back kept tweaking on me and you know everything kind of looked like i was doing things okay like i would film my form and things looked like they were okay but there was just these wee odd shifts and stuff um side to side whenever i was doing squats and deadlifts and stuff which i didn't think anything of i just thought oh well it's heavy you know, you know <laughs> yeah go under the the favorable side you know just a wee bit more dominant on that side and never really thought anything of it but the more i trained the worse it got and then the more i started especially leaning away from my knee whenever i got injured because it took so long to get it um, get the operation for it to get it um so it's a tiny bit of meniscus but it just constantly caused um swelling and inflammation so i just couldn't bear weight on the leg properly and i couldn't bend my knee properly so i just had to avoid a bunch of stuff and i was still going and trying to wrestle which you can imagine that what that's like when you're trying to sit you know hold someone down and you're bending your knee and you're like oh and you're just you're just constantly oh, i'll just roll them that way i'll fall <laughs> <laughs> you know i was like damn it um so yeah, i just started trying to work around everything and i just i actually got to a point where i was showing up to the classes and just having to sit on the bench and watch because i was just too react i couldn't do things there was even i think there was a point we were doing our wing chun grades i don't know if you were there it was like the apprentice level four or something like that and i couldn't physically lift my right arm i had done something to my shoulder i was doing a, a drill and i was rolling around the floor and it felt like it popped out completely and then popped back in and i could not lift my arm up level with my shoulder at all and i didn't go and get it seen to i just thought i'll sort itself out and just completely left it and that went on for months um and I finally then went and found a good physio and they were able to help me out with it in a couple of sessions. It was so embarrassing. It was like, oh, why did I leave that for so long? You know, and that's the yeah. thing. You, you don't know what's normal, you know, well, I suppose nobody knows what's normal. You don't know what things should feel like because you haven't ever experienced anything other than you because mm. you're stuck inside you, you know. And um, so the way I feel training now and what I perceive as training to be nothing like it was whenever I was in my mid twenties of how I thought squats should feel. And after you finish a, you know, a, a rolling session, you're just sort of like, everything's in agony, but it's like, you know, after I addressed all the mobility things of like, I'd finish a session and be like, I feel strong. I feel like I could flip a car right now. Is this the way I'm supposed to feel? Yeah. And that's because you're stuck inside you. Like I said, you don't know any different. You know, you might think it's totally normal for things to hurt and, you know, be sore all the time. And some people will just chalk it off the edge. I chalked it off the edge whenever I was 28, 29. I was like, oh, I'm getting on a bit. <laughs> you <know? laughs> and you're standing around and some of the other people in the class were in their 40s and 50s and stuff. And they're like, yep, that's it. Yep, that's what it is. That's what it is. Yep, getting on a bit, getting on a bit. And it's like, but now, you know, from, through working through so many people over the years, I've met people in their 60s and their 70s that are rolling around the place fine. They're like, what's wrong with you? Just, you don't move, right? You know, every morning I get up, I start to move. That's the habit I have. And 
what you start to notice with people that have good habits like that is like mm, they, they move a bit better than other people that <laughs> roll out of bed roll into the car roll into work roll you know back into the car back onto the sofa back into bed you know it's a different way of moving things and when you stop moving your joints like joints they tend to start getting crabby the the idea of you not knowing anything other than yourself is a really important one i think to lock on to because i did the same I remember tearing my scapula and being like well it's just another injury it'll be grand like i remember driving home not even able to use my left arm change gear with my right all driving down the m1 being like this is terrible i knew that yeah you came where you were coming to the gym at that point yeah i remember I, we, we were doing sparring drills and you were only jabbing <laughs> you just had I, your hands you. what, what happened was <laughs> some guy threw me and we stumbled during the throw and i landed awkwardly and was and then being stubborn if we want i i remember because i was sparring this guy he had glasses and long hair and a, and a bit of a goatee and i remember pinning my chin onto this arm to keep it up and jabbing with the other hand and the instructor shouting use your other arm and i was like yep and then once the the timer went my arm just fell and i was like yeah my that does not work and i remember you giving <laughs> off to me oh you're just jabbing i was like uh, yep <laughs> And just continued on and went on with it. Yeah. And that's the stupid. Was it, yeah, it was your, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, it's, it's not your coach's fault. You're you're the one going, no, I feel totally fine. I feel totally fine. They're going, mm, do you? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, always, and it, always be honest with your coach. Always say if something feels funny because they can just change it up for you or help you out. <laughs> I, or tell you to sit up here. What are you doing? Sit down. Your, your arm doesn't <laughs> lift and it sounded yeah. like a tour. Sit down. But that's the thing. Like we, when we started, you, it was you didn't show weakness like i tore that about a minute and a half before the round was over and just got back up and was like excruciating pain and my brain was like just turn that off for now because you have a minute and a half to go i think because you only spar one height and punch repeatedly in the face as well like, this is not good but but the like i know because i went through it i was like this is just the way my body feels like that's that's a da that's damaged and it wasn't until I started doing the mobility and I started to build strength around my mobility. And then one day I got up and I was like, my arm doesn't hurt. Because no, that was the first thing I, I'd get up in the morning and my first thought would be like, oh, you didn't move that. Mm -hmm. And I got up one day and was like, wait a minute. This isn't. So people, I think people don't even realize. They think it's normal. Now my back's always been like that. And you're like, but that's not what a back's supposed to be like. Mm -hmm. I always have my shoulders here. Remember the day I came to you and you were like, what's going on there? And I was like, oh, I hurt myself again. And you're like, you can see your shoulders peripherally. And I'm like, yeah, you shouldn't be able to see that, should you? <laughs> yeah. There's a there's a picture somewhere with me doing, like trying to do my hands above my head and then I... we did a bit at work and then my hands actually went above. And it's having that. That's why I love the idea of creating the habit because even I've been doing stuff like this for over 20 years, but you still get in your own head and forget and then you come and meet you again and we're hanging out and you go, why are you, why are you doing that with your arm? Mm -hmm. What am I doing? You're doing this. Here, try these three things. What's it feel like now? I didn't know it felt bad until you made me do that. And now it feels great. So <laughs> must have felt bad is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, so if I was coming to you for an assessment or I was listening to this now and I'm thinking, this program sounds amazing. Um, where do I start? What's my plan? How, how do I like get going with the program just get the damn program you go Bad program <laughs> Bad program you go no it's um yeah it is it's laid out in a way that you do tests first then you go through exercises and then you retest at the end after you've done them in your first session so you sort of like right how's my balance how's my hip flexibility how's this that and the other and then you run through the exercises and they're still even the exercises in their own they're all assessments in their own so the, the ones that i have chosen they're essentially based off if you ever know the, the like the physio test like the faber test and the thomas test and all that stuff it's like if you get really good at these movements you will pass those tests so and you'll never need to have someone touch you you know you, you'll be able to go oh unless you I, want them to unless you want them to unless you'll be able to go oh i physically cannot do this movement properly i'll need to lean a bit and work my way 
to actually improve on it. Um, and then afterwards, you'll do a retest. And for a lot of people, you'll, you'll see like really quick improvements of the movements of their initial tests. And they'll be like, hey, that's great. So that's your warm mobility. And that's, you know, you're seeing there, you're able to make an improvement on your range of motion. You want to try and get your cold mobility. Like, so before you even warm up as close to your warm mobility as you can over time. And that way, you know, when your kid runs across the street or you're, you know, suddenly attacked by a tiger, you're not going to pull a hamstring. You're going to be able to actually deal with it, you know? It's so inconvenient. Um, I know tiger <laughs> tigers everywhere. Um, so yeah, that's the, the idea behind it. And you're, you know, it's, it's not in a follow along format. It's something that people always ask all the time. It's like, I oh, these videos, you know, it's, it's great programming and everything, but you know, I'd love it to be follow along, but it's like, sometimes you will need to go slower. Sometimes you will need to spend more time on one side than the other. And that's coming right back to that body awareness thing. You don't just go through the motions with SMM. You go, this is where you should be at with this. If you're not, this is how you work on it. And your goal is to improve on these things over time. And it is that easy to do, you know, with all the information out there, it can seem really daunting and hard to actually improve your flexibility. But no, if you stick to the same core exercises for a long enough time period, you will improve on them. That's just what happens. And it just works that way for everyone. And you'll see in the group all the time, um, people posting in, some people will post after the first session, you know, like you were saying, it's like, I didn't realize how you know bad my knee was, but after one session, my knee feels amazing. There was a couple even this morning there, um, people just saying that you know their backs been stiff for they don't know how long and just after one session they're feeling absolutely amazing and then for other people it's like in four weeks time they're like whenever i first tried to do these couple of things i couldn't do them at all and now you know i'm about a five out of ten with them this is amazing you know and then eight weeks time they're feeling better again and then you know it just everyone has is different sort of levels that will improve on things and um, myself like i was someone that took like six months of daily effort to try and make any improvement with any one thing and um, i didn't have smm back then so i was learning the movements like one at a time going why can't i do this and and you know so it was, it was a necessity for me because i um couldn't walk properly or anything or stand up straight because my back pain was so bad um because of injured discs so um i had to learn how to do this stuff properly you know whereas for a lot of other people like sometimes it's just something so simple that they've just missed for years and it's like here you go and like like I was saying earlier on at the start, you know, you've maybe had a problem for a few years that you're dealing with in a couple of weeks. And it's like, this is amazing, you know? So, um, yeah, the body, I like to look at the body more as like, it should move this way. You just like to do this. You need, you need to appreciate how it should move. And then it will allow you to do what you like to do. Whereas if you avoid what it's supposed to be able to do, and you always just do the stuff you like to do, like running, for example, would be one you know, it's going to get yeah. crabby. It's going to get annoyed. If you're never fully strengthening your joints in all the directions that they can move, you're going to start compensating somewhere over time. And, you know, for a lot of people, you'll get away with things for five, 10, 20 years. And then all of a sudden they run into that cycle that I did. As yeah. They get like I call them bouncing pains. So it's like your knee hurts one week, then your hip hurts the other week and then your shoulder sore and then your neck sore and it's back to the hip again. And you're just like, oh, getting old, you know, and it's like, no, it's because you're literally trying to shift away from everything that's avoiding being used properly because you're not using it properly. Yeah, it's why you would notice it's obviously an extreme example, but when people are getting their people damage their knee, they shift their weight, they end up getting what they think is their good knee needs replaced because mm. they've messed it up and then because it's been replaced and they're leaning to the other side they end up getting the other one and they're like oh my knees are just going and you're like well not really it's because you keep doing like you just demonstrated there because i know i used to walk like whenever i first did the scapula i used to zip my hand in my pocket when i taught so i would try not to move it around instead of like taking a break from it i'd try to do that i'd go and spar with one hand but the hand was zipped in the pocket thinking it's safe in there it'll be fine and you're like it's also attached to other things that can move <laughs> so if i'm moving that maybe that's causing that damage um, Roger, your head just starts going over there <laughs> I, why can't i avoid the punch because you're already over there god damn it <laughs> so the, the 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 idea of just building that awareness of of how you are and i, I know there's going to be people listening to this going so i shoot my ankle shouldn't just be sore and I've seen loads of people do what you just said there. They, they, you'll say to them, you just jumped out of your car and then started doing trail running. Yeah. Do you not stretch or do any mobility or anything? No, I don't need to. I don't need to. And you're like, mm -hmm. all right. And then about a year or so later, they're like, my ankle, they, they stand on a stone, the ankle goes and that's out. And then the, the next thing goes and the next thing. And it's just a bad run. I'm having a wild bad run of injuries. You're like, well, Aye. 
because you know because you, you don't need to <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't need to be mobile it's not yeah. for me but that, the nice thing about a lot of this stuff as well is it compounds so when you are doing it regularly that you know you eventually can become someone who can get away with not having a proper thorough warm-up because mm. you're doing it often enough so we have a really nice um, fit follow along on youtube it's about 20 minutes long and i would always give out the runners and say to them look twice a week just do it in the evenings and they just find that things start to feel a lot better over time because they're building the strength of their feet and their balance is getting better their ankles are feeling more stable and that's carrying upstream if you make your feet move well and be really really strong you're gonna have better ankle stability better knee stability better hip stability and you know you're gonna have a stronger core off the back of that and so it's one thing that um, we show in our in our course ultimate core it's like you want to think of core strength as all the ways your spine can move but all the ways that your body can almost think and react as well if you can improve reaction times that's essentially making your body smarter so that it won't stiffen up and go into spasm when it's taken off guard it's actually able <laughs> to cope with things you know and it's something that's majorly overlooked you know everyone seems to think that mobility just involves just stretching all of the time or they get to the point where they're like it's um stretching and strengthening it's like right great right you're on the right track now it's stretching and it's strengthening but it's also being able to react well in you know, a situation that might catch you off guard. And that's where I love this um, balance element, bringing things into that as well, making people balance for prolonged periods of time, because that's ultimately what's going to build better stability rather than you doing three sets of 10 of a very specific isolated, you know, leg exercise. It's like, get on one leg, start trying to juggle while you're on one leg, fall yeah. around the place. One uh, drill I really, really love that we have on our YouTube channel is called the plate balance drill. The goal with that, so you limit the amount of foot that you're balancing on, so you're only able to balance on the ball of the foot, and you have to drop your heel down below where your toes are. So it's not something you would normally balance in, and a lot of people would be able to balance, you know, just if they you know go up yeah. on their tippy toes, they're able to balance relatively well. But you never really get the balance with your heel below your toes. So it's a really nice way to make everything harder. So as soon as you start getting good at something, you want to figure out how to make it harder because that's the only way you're going to get adaptation from it. Whereas if you're just doing the stuff that you're good at all the time, your body's just going to plateau with stuff, you know, so you're never picking up any new skills. So your body's just going to get used to what it's doing and it's just going to get more and more efficient at doing that stuff. So then yeah. you're not going to keep getting gains from it. And um, which is the idea of progressive loading. You know, if you just keep lifting the same, same weight, gains are important. If, but if you're always going to lift the same weight and you never try to challenge yourself with a heavier weight, you know you're not going to get any stronger you know it's it's that same sort of principle same thing goes with skill skill acquisition you know and balance is a skill it's something that you always want to focus on make sure you have good good solid balance because as you know everyone gets older those things start to deteriorate and as you get older again they start to deteriorate quite rapidly so i would rather be at the very very top of a of a scale when things start to deteriorate rather than somewhere down around the bottom where I haven't worked on my balance for 10 or 20 years, maybe longer, just by accident because of my job and my kids and whatever, you know, you can accidentally stop moving the way you're meant to move. And that's when you just become locked inside yourself. And you do, like you said, you just turn things off. It's like, that's my sore shoulder. I'll just forget about it, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah. and then some people even go to the extremes where they start popping pills all the time. I found it in my Tai Chi class because they were, I was the youngest in it and the rest of them were 60 upwards. And a lot of them would come at the start and we do like arm raise and stuff and they'd raise their arm about here and they'd be like, I can't go any higher. So about shoulder height. And then as you get talking to them, it got to the point where I just realized it's because they, they were taught as you get older, you lose your mobility as if it's just a given. And I'm like, did you... And now, because I've done so many, I'm like, did you take all the higher shelf stuff and the lower shelves? You don't have to reach up. Ah, it's too high. And I'm like, right. Is anything above your head? No, no, no. Is anything on the ground? No. So you wonder why your range is only within here. The only thing you've actually been practicing is this mid range. So if you, you can't reach up because you never reach up and you can't reach down because you never reach down. Like that's, and, and I think people are just sort of, they sort of believe that that's that's just what happens. You're going to get old, and when you get old, you're in baller. Physically. Well, you, need, you need to start being careful. As soon as you start being careful, that's <laughs> when you're done for. As soon as you start avoiding stuff, you start avoiding more stuff. That's yeah. pretty much what happens. I see, the great thing now, actually, I think with um, the likes of social media and YouTube and everything now, is like I seen a video the other day of a 90 year old woman doing a roll from the floor up into an astagrass squat and standing up straight like she was 12 years old. It was absolutely right. amazing to see, you know, and like 90 years old, you know, you're seeing more of that stuff happening now, more and more and more, you know, because 
people are living a lot longer now. So it's like, you know, don't want to sort of get the 50 and go, well, I'm past it now. I've only a couple of years left. It's like, you might have another 50 years left. Do you really want to keep up with them? <laughs> you know, it's, uh, yeah. it's something that motivates me to keep moving anyway, because it's been, you know, on that, you know, chronic pain scale that I was on for so long. It was like, that is not a fun way to be. It changes you as a person. It really does. It makes you absolutely miserable, horrible to live with. And it just sucks the life out of you, you know? So you, you want to always focus on moving well and feeling good. And the second something feels funny, you go all in on getting it sorted. You don't leave it. You don't ignore it. You know, it's, it's your body. You've only got one. You've got to look after it. Agreed. Um, well, one of the things I liked about what you were saying there, because you see it all over social media, is people standing on one leg and juggling. But if you go and ask them, why are you doing that? I saw it on social media. It's look cool. Or if they were doing that plate balance or any sort of balancing, oh, cool, why are you doing that? Oh, it's like the way it feels. Whereas you're talking about the depth of it, like you're training your body, you're learning. And, and from a psychological point of view, which is the direction I usually go and all this stuff, like you're training your resilience. You start mm -hmm. to believe, like I know from being injured, when you're injured and you don't trust your body, mm -hmm. it's scary. Like whenever you have to go somewhere and you're like, fuck, what if, what if my tire goes and I have to change? The, I couldn't do that. My back wouldn't do that. Yeah, or my or shoulder won't even out. a concert, you know, I can't stand for two hours. I Aye. couldn't do that. You stop yep. going places. You just stop going shopping because you can't push the trolley anymore. Yeah, I, it's it's mad. Like, but so understand that depth of why. And again, it's I know we haven't really done much of your origin, but it's coming through bits. But because you've been unfortunate enough to go through chronic pain and to go through multiple injuries and have to reevaluate and do things it, it's why it, you're so well placed to help people because like same as when i did the kinesiology people would come and go you don't know what it's like to have a really bad knee and you're like well <laughs> turns out you don't know what it's like <laughs> to have a broken rib well yeah. i've done that too it's the closest to jackie chan i've ever felt is when people talk about injuries and i'm like well it's just starting naming these off if you like <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's uh one of the scariest ones for me was when i got drop foot and i was just looking at my left foot and it was like move uh yeah just do this. wiggle your toes um uh, lift up do, do something and it, just, it just looks at you and you're like that's not right like my foot was actually dragging behind me i had to fully lift my entire hip and side up to walk otherwise my foot just trailed along the floor that was a pretty scary one um any <laughs> any way of avoiding that because i know people listening are like what the f i never even heard of that yeah. i did not want that like, what is <laughs> that, that can happen um, yeah that's <laughs> where my disc injuries are l4 l5 um, i have an extrusion which impinges on a nerve as well and it was just compressed for a while and essentially that's lost the power of my foot um completely yes. now i was able to get it back and what i would put it down to is making sure to move your hips regularly all the time so even you know with a disc injury you're not a you're not going to make things worse by doing body weight movements now if i was to strap up a barbell with 200 kilos and start jumping with myself leaning sideways yeah, I might pop the disc out further, but it's not going to be something I'm going to choose to do. But as old long as Tom would have done it, old Tom would have done that. <laughs> um, well, new Tom kind of still does it, but not with 200 kilos. <laughs> um, but yeah, as long as I'm moving my hips regularly and I understand how to hinge properly and brace properly and move properly, then I'm able to remove those pain triggers and fears of movement, essentially, because I'm able to, you know, I can't feel my left side the same way as I feel my right side. But I understand that because I can stand on one leg, I can deadlift, I can single leg deadlift, I can um, balance well, I can do split squats, I can do all of those things, that the muscles are still working. I just can't feel them in the same way. It's uh, just different. And I have a, a good bit of muscle atrophy as well on my left glute. It's uh, infinitely smaller than my right glute now. But thankfully everybody's going to be looking out for that in pictures everyone's going to be looking out for that if you ever see a handstand picture of me from the back on you'll see how much smaller my left glute is than my right glute <laughs> um but yeah because i constantly work on the attributes and the skills and the balance and the strength and stuff uh, and make sure that i'm doing that all of the time i'm totally pain free and i'm able to train just the way anyone else would in, in fact you know dare I even say slightly better than some of the population I'm able to do more things because of the level of body awareness and I think you touched on it briefly there earlier on whenever we were talking about um you know shying away from things and 
not doing certain things. When you can't move your baby finger because it hurts your back, you become very aware of how much micro adjustments are always going on with your body at all times. Mm -hmm. You're, you're always moving. You're never off. You know, muscles are never just completely off. If they were all off, you'd just fall into a big bag of bones. So everything is always working. You can just go through stages of hypersensitivity and starting to avoid things is one of the worst things that you can do. I've always found with people, you know, if it's a fresh injury, you know, you go to the doctor, you go to the physio, you get it sorted out, you get MRI scans, you see, is there any bad structural damage? But if it's just minor or it's wear and tear, like who does not have wear and tear in them by age 30? You know what I mean? Yeah. There's something's going to be wearing down a bit. You're degenerating as soon as you pop out. You know, it's just what happens. <laughs> um, keeping the muscles strong and the, you know, the structures stable around everything is what is the best thing to do. It's, it's just going to give you more confidence and make you feel better because, when you lock yourself in your own head and you start avoiding doing certain things, you can start to feel horrible. You can start to feel weak. And then that becomes essentially your identity. I'm a yeah. weak person. I have a weak back and you attach yourself to that. And it's just a downhill spiral, you know? So just, just, I'm just going to segue off that. Cause I think that tidied that up nicely. Um, when you started out doing this, um, creating the program and stuff, were you like, this is going to be my career. I'm going to become the simplistic mobility guy. Like we did a talk fuck, years ago and we called you the mobility dude. Yeah. And you're like, I'm the move. Cause we didn't have a name for you. I'm the mobility <laughs> dude. Dude. <laughs> That'll do. And this yeah. guy, uh, uh, good luck trying to find that. It's somewhere you can somewhere. find it. <laughs> um, but it, like, it didn't seem like that was the plan. The plan just seemed to be like, you wrecked yourself, you fixed yourself. And then you were like, wait a minute, I was fucked and I am not. People that have we in, like I could help a lot. And then like, I think it's worth going into how successful you are as well. Cause you, it's not like you have your wee program and you train in a wee gym and some people come in and have a wee go at it and go, ah, it's good, I'll go like, you're global, would we say at this point, like worldwide, you're prestige worldwide. You're like step brothers. I don't know about prestige, but yeah, <laughs> we are worldwide. I think at the moment, um, I think we're coming up to 15,000 people. We've got SMM so far around the world, um, Australia, USA, absolutely everywhere. And yeah, like all them years ago, you know, it was never really an intention. Like you said, it just became what I was known for. It was like, I didn't even have the advertise back in the day whenever I was working in the gym. It was like, people were like, you have to go and see this guy. I went to this guy. I had this problem with X, Y, and Z for years and he sorted it in a couple of days. Um, I say, I sorted it. I give them the exercises to sort them themselves. That's yeah. the thing. You but I love that. They're like, Tom fixed me. You're like, yeah. did you any of the work? No, no, he just, and I was fixed. Yeah, no, I, I made you hold a position for a while and then you did it for a few weeks after too. That's what helped. It <laughs> wasn't, wasn't me. Um, but yeah, it was that just that knowledge of no one especially, you know, where, where you'll be in a few weeks time, you know, cause you know, for a lot of people, I only ever needed to work with them once. And I said, I was able to say to them, this is where you'll be at with this exercise in a few weeks. And this is where you take it from there and just make sure that you keep doing this in your warmups long-term, you know, it's to give that, you know, you're not just giving someone one exercise once and then going, Oh, happy days. That feels a bit nicer. And then by the time I've got down the street again, they're back to where they were again. It's yeah. that sort of knowledge that I have of what happens long-term and also the setbacks you can get as well, especially in the terms, you know, if someone's having recurring back injuries or back issues, not injuries. Um, and it's like, but well, it's going away and it's coming back again and it's going away and it's coming back in again. Let's figure out why it's going away. Let's see what we can develop from there. And then, you know, we'll be able to test their flexibility and stability and see, the attributes that they're weak on and then tell them and then they fix them, which is happily what SMM does. So that's, I'd almost got to a point where people were coming to me and I was, you know, before SMM even really hundred percent became a program on its own, you know, uh, the method that I use, I just kept falling back in these same exercises again and again and again, people were coming into me and it was like the human body for me was starting to turn into a car. I was like, yeah. right, can you, can you do this? Can you do this? Can you No. Okay. There you go. Can you do this? No. Can you do this? No thought so. And then <laughs> it was yeah. like, Here's what you need to do. Go away and work on that. And then you get a message a few weeks later again, going, I've been doing these exercises for a few weeks and I feel great now. And, you know, it just became so almost systematized. Is that a word systematized? Can we use it that? It is now. It is People now. <laughs> Trademark. <laughs> um, 
yeah that uh not that i was getting bored but it was just like people you know if you had made like a funny montage of it you know the way we like to make funny videos funny montage because just had people coming in and me just going ah, here you go do that ah, here you go do that as if you know it became so automatic for me and i was just able to see these trends with people having shoulder problems what they assess people having back problems what they assess knee problems what they assess and immediately i'd got to the point where i was able to pick out the three or four exercises that i 100 percent knew they would struggle with by the way they're walking um yeah and it just became really automatic so then i was talking to you at one stage and saying about making this thing into a program and uh jenny uh, my business partner she actually made it into a mug the message that i sent her it was like i'm going to film this thing on sunday are you free and uh yeah. you know this is before we, we even thought about making a business you know um are you free and uh she went yeah and i says it's and i said what it is it's these tests these exercises and, and retests and then there's a couple of bonus exercises in it and a, and a head to toe mobility thing and i'm gonna call it a method because it's not so much you know a program would be all these different exercises for weeks and weeks and weeks and progressive load and stuff like that whereas this is the actual method that i use to assess and yeah. sort out problems it's the actual thing that i use it's the actual thing if you ever meet me it's exactly what i will take you through and um, so that's why it was called the method um in the end and uh yeah, you came down and you used, I think you used your phone for the first recording. No, we what had a we had a camera. We had a phone there for side recording in case we uh, needed it, and a DSLR, my first uh, DSLR, and we were like, "How does this machine work?" Not one hundred percent sure. Yeah. This is what we're doing, and we had a a mic, a mic where we decked the phone. Mic it was one of the original ways people were now doing hands free micage without the big because the room we were in was too echoey. You could i had a, a point and shoot mic but when you spoke i was blah, 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 yeah <laughs> can't do that yeah and, but that was that you came down um and you set a lot up and i was like because i had no idea how to make an online course i'd never made one before and i was standing you know i had my printouts of everything the way i teach everything and um the way i wanted the course to be laid out and i was like what do you do liam and you just you said to me i think at the point i can't remember exactly what you said but you basically said teach it like you were teaching someone standing in front of you i was like yeah. right okay and um that's what we did we filmed it and it was it was just one day we took to film it wasn't it, it what was one day it. to film it one day to film it and then um you sent the files over and jenny put it up on the website i'm completely useless with all forms of tech by the way i've always had to have people help me with that stuff and um, if jenny wasn't there i wouldn't even have a website <laughs> so um <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, so yeah, we put it up there. And then, you know, because I've been making content for a while, and um, just because I love to make videos, and I love to help people. And um, we released the program and then, you know, people were buying it. And then it just started to sell itself. So this was even before we'd started using advertisement. People were just saying about this program that we're getting online. And um, it was literally selling itself. They're you know, running groups and CrossFit groups and everything. They were saying, you have to try out this program. I've been doing this and it's you know great. So the word of mouth was one of the biggest things at the start that really propelled everything. Um, yeah. And then from there, it just started growing and growing. And uh, then eventually Jenny left her job to become full-time business partner with me. And yeah, we just went from there and done some mad, crazy stuff ever since then. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember even when it first came out, I was just thinking how amazing it was for me as a coach just to save me time. I was able to go, right, this is what I'm repeatedly telling you what to do. Just buy this fucking program. Do that four times a week. And then when you come to me, we don't have to keep repeatedly saying to you, you, you can't deadlift today. Look at the shape of the way you're walking. We need to fix that. Like, just do this. And that, it just was so, so time saving. Yeah. Um, and then or like I remember we did a few other videos, like we did a core seminar and we did video somewhere in Derry, did we did i come on it was, it was a seminar one of the first seminars yeah you were you were my guy because like people were asking me to do stuff and i was like hey liam they've asked me to do stuff did you, <laughs> come, did you come along with me and help me out here <laughs> yeah. so it was like you know i didn't have that same confidence back then you know because <clears throat> i was confidence in everything that i was doing and teaching but putting myself out there i had no confidence with whatsoever so yeah you were a big part of helping me out with that stuff I was like Liam Liam they've asked me to do a seminar and you were like so do it <laughs> it's like can you are you sure you can, <laughs> you, you I, I, I remember the first time you asked me to film this I was like do you actually want this film you're like well uh, just will you be there and and like sure if you're there then you can film it but I, I, I would just want you to be there <laughs> like 
all right, let's go. Which I always found strange because you were in a band and stuff. And I was like, you're on stage. Mm -hmm. Like you've, you've done all this, but again, it's probably down to what I've noticed working with um, coaches over the years. It's when you build your own method, then it, now it's not like, say, if we use the band analogy, you're playing someone else's song and you've got other people around you. You're like, this is me. Yeah. This is, this is what I do. And I remember what before, whenever the idea came for turning it into a program and actually videoing it and selling it was when you were getting to the point where you were like, see, by the time they walk from that door to where I am, I know what I'm going to do. Like, mm. it's just, and we're like, well, this will just save you, save you more time and you'll be able to reach so many people. Um, I want to touch on just because you said you've done some crazy stuff and made videos. Like you, I, what I love about your videos are you, they're you, you didn't come out with, hello, jolly good. I'm a guy who does things and I'm very professional and you should be the person who's professional with me and stuff and move your hip. Like <laughs> you, you came out and you're like, this is like, how did that, how did you stick to yourself when everyone else was doing the, like, I'm not going to name any names, like, but there's so many people just so full of shit and you meet them in real life and you're like, Oh, that's not even how you speak at all or act or get on or anything. Like, what do you think it was in you that made you go, this is, I'm me and fuck it. And this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm, yeah. Um, hours and hours and hours of boring seminars <laughs> and uh, <laughs> list trying to get information and learn things from other coaches. And like, I, I went so far, like I would have watched mobility seminars in German just to get see if there was a, a nugget if there was like one sentence in a two hour long seminar that was halfway through or whatever like that there and the rest of it was all gibberish and I, I didn't understand any of it you know it was worth watching and it was you know because I was so 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 passionate about it I was willing to do that but what I realize is that not a lot of people are really that passionate about wanting to learn that stuff so intently oh. that they you know so I thought that you know, I don't want to teach stuff like that. I want to make it fun. I want to make it presentable and I want to make it relatable because the last thing, especially as well, if you're in chronic pain, the last thing you want is someone going, yeah, well, you know, if you, uh, if you straighten out your hip, you know, might help, might not, you know, yeah. whereas, you know, it, I've so much experience with these movements and what they can do over time and stuff that I'm able to go, this is the greatest thing in the world. If you work on this for a while, it will help you. It will make a difference to you. And, you know, actually motivating people to do the stuff is one of the hardest parts for, I think for any coach, you know, it's, yeah. it's actually getting people to want to do the stuff and actually believe in you as well. So like we have so much fun with what we're doing and anytime we're making content, even when we're planning, like we, um, remember Jenny and I are planning content, like we're laughing our heads off and just come up with these ideas and we things we can say in the video and, you know, analogies and, you know, little silly jokes and stuff like um, one of our more recent ones there we did was with the, Thorough cane, you know, the weird massage tool thing you can buy. Yeah, seen, yeah. And uh, I, I run on the screen and take it off her and saying, Is this what you're wasting your money on? Boomerangs that don't work. And I throw it away. And uh, yeah, just thinking of things that got in my head. Like I was standing laughing for about two minutes before we actually shot that because it just came to me before we started filming. So we're just constantly laughing, constantly having fun. But, you know, at the, at the end of the day, it is all about helping people. And that's what we've realized the best way to do that is to, you know, make it entertaining, make it fun, make it not seem like a chore, you know. Mm -hmm it's it's got to be the way to do things i think you know to, if you really thoroughly enjoy and love what you're doing and what you're talking about it's going to come across in your videos you know and it's it's going to make people want to listen to you and hang out with you and subscribe to you as well you know you, if you want to grow a worldwide brand essentially what we've done is you're not going to get there by boring people you know you've got to be <laughs> yeah. you got to stand out a little bit and you know inspire people as well that's one of the things i would have noticed when people buy the program like whenever all my wee groups and the people around me that I send to buy it, they'd come back and go, really like the, the stuff, it's really good. I love Tommy's Wild Crack. <laughs> and you're like, well, that's going to keep them doing it. Like, And I, again, I, I've suggested th things when I was doing the kinesiology stuff. You need to watch this and this will help you. When I did the anxiety, watch this and it'll help you. And people go, yeah, I think that'll really help. And the way they say it, I'm like, you're never doing that again. Even though you know it will help, it helped you in that moment. And it's probably because the way it was taught was... Like you said there, just move yourself. Just do that. I see if you just did this six times, you'd be you'd be querying good at your old lifting your leg and all. Whereas you're throwing laptops about the place and <laughs> making 
what's the most epics? elaborate <laughs> what's the most elaborate <laughs> social media have you ever went elaborate like have you ever thought you know what i'm gonna do something fucking mental social media video wise have you ever done anything I don't know, Liam. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Might have hired hired an entire Viking village and fifty Vikings and horses and you know cameras that were probably about one hundred and fifty grand's worth and uh, yeah, an entire team to film an entire Viking advert production that's about four minutes long. With the uh, the music was done by a guy that works in Hans Zimmer's studio. Um, Hans Zimmer, if you don't know, does like the best movies in the world, the music for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was pretty fun. Yeah. So that's <laughs> uh, as, as a brand, we want to, you know, push the boundaries that way and just stand out more than we can. And again, it is at the end of the day, we want to help people and, you know, stand out and get more people to come to us because ultimately we know we can help them. So, you know, it's. I wanted to bring that up because your your ads aren't like there's so many people that have ads to like I couldn't think of a better way of putting it, but like to trick people into do it, taking their product and to trick things happening and do it. but your ads are literally like this is me but on fucking speed now and do <laughs> it it attracts people to it and then people give things a go because it's entertaining and fun like you're saying there and, I, and i'm sort of pushing this point because i know there's a few coaches that lis- listen to this and i've been saying to them about their social media content don't try to be this guy don't try to be whoever like just do what you're doing like don't try to be tom because you'll not have that energy and that psyched outness when you're riding around on a horse with a sword <laughs> yeah. Um, it, yeah like that's um like i was saying earlier about me and jenny having such a laugh making these things when we're coming up with the adverts it's even funnier. Like people comment on the adverts saying, how do you stick him, Jenny? But it's like, do you really think Jenny willingly wore a big sandwich board saying the great Tom Morrison on it? And it was me that made her do that. <laughs> it's like yeah. the ideas come just as much from her as well. Like it's, it was, it's just, um, it's why we get on so well. It was just this mad sense of humor to do these ridiculous It's why the ads things. work so well, because yeah. it works perfectly because Jenny plays her part so well that it does look like you're a bit of a fucking lunatic and you're like, wear <laughs> this and do this and fuck the internet and go over here. And people are like, the fact that you're getting messages back of people going, how did she put up with that? Like you made her do that. You're like, it's work- this is working. That's you're, you're eliciting, eliciting emotion amongst it. And then again, if you can elicit that and people like, I know personally, if, if I, if I'm watching something and I feel good watching it, mm-hmm. then, then I'm going to be like, well, he made me feel good. Just by having a bit of crack, like laughter, you forget your pain and your worries and stuff in a moment that you're lost in, in, in entertainment. And then you come back and go, fuck if that's what that's like. Maybe when he teaches it, it's because it'd be wild shit if it came up. Then the teaching was, hello, I'm Tom <laughs> Morrison. Yeah. Like that just wouldn't, wouldn't well, it all. We do, we do tone it down a bit, you know. <laughs> ah, you're not like, mental enough. Vikings aye, but don't run not... half stretch, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's still, you know, I do have a, a very unique way of teaching teaching as well and you know just the cues and stuff that you use you know which every coach picks us up over time different ways of explaining things about you know how to squeeze your glutes and all that stuff everyone will have their own silly cues for things that they like to have you know and it's um yeah focus on being the best teacher you can as well because yeah you can have the best adverts in the world but if you don't have a good program or anything to go back up with it it's like you're not going to get anywhere you know yeah I just love it's a holistic approach to the person, but it's a holistic approach to the business as well. So you're combining all of that. Um, I'm very conscious of your time here. So I'm going to round it up because we'll just talk forever, mm-hmm. um, which will be awesome. But um, I know you're a busy man or a busy man. <laughs> Get <in there. laughs> um, where would people find you if they want to find you? Uh, Tom Morrison.uk. We're on TikTok, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on YouTube, we're on all the usual stuff. I think we're, we're on Twitter and LinkedIn as well, but we don't really bother with them that much. Um, but yeah, the YouTube channel, if anything, if you're not going to buy something, it's worth following just for the information and you know the the tips that we release a new video every Friday um, covering something or other. Uh, so it's always worth just having that just to, just to be in your inbox and just be like, oh yeah, maybe maybe do that today. You know, have a wee bit of a stretch. You know, so um, yeah. I, I love them wee videos just like jenny was putting up a couple five minute ones and sometimes mm. if i'm just reading or i'm doing a bit of work and it pops up on my screen um new video i'll just go i'll just do that and i just take a wee break for myself and do like the last one i did popped up was the five minute 
um 50 50 and just just pops up and i'm doing a wee bit of work i'm like i'll just do that now yeah the 90 90 <laughs> yeah the 90 90 50 50 it makes like, sense though it makes sense <laughs> somebody was being a dick <laughs> ages ago about it and being real pernickety about it so i started purposely calling the 50 50 around them and then it became a thing uh, you know, it can't, yeah it, and it's just auto- automatic that's like yeah. me any anytime i get startled i go oh i mean oh and it's just became anytime i get startled i go oh i mean i'm manly rar um i'll link everything down i will end up fucking segueing again i'll link everything in the comments so people can find you uh tom i really appreciate you coming on thank you Thanks very so much for having me yeah and for everyone listening have a super awesome day whatever you get up to um i'll speak again soon Biceps. I should have flexed as well. <laughs>